Welcome to this video series on the neurobiology of stress. This is a video series that's being conducted with you, the Newfield community at large, in mind. My name is Chris Balsley. The first installment on this three-part series is on the neurobiology of stress and the triune brain theory. The triune brain theory divides the human brain into three sections. Yellow, indicating the front part of our brain, where we're clear, rational, and analytic. Blue indicates the back part of our brain, and that's where we have emotions. That's where we have passion, love, anger, joy, uh, bonding, human relationships. Back here, the red part, is the brain stem, and this is about basic human survival. So it's about what we do with danger, it's about eating, it's about breathing, and survival of the species. So reproduction is back here as well. So let's make it a little simpler. Knowledge, nonverbal wisdom, and the four Fs. Fight, flight, freeze, and reproduction. So with those three sections in mind, let's think about what happens to us as human beings under stress. If we can figure this out, we can literally shift our observers in the face of stress. So under stress, we get less blood supply to the front part of our brain and more blood supply to the back part of our brain. What that means is we're literally hijacked by our instinct, our reflexes, and our emotions in the face of danger. Less intelligent, more emotional and reactive. Now there's nothing broken here. That's just what we do under stress. It's been designed into us over millennia. If you think about facing danger and you're confronted with whatever danger is to you and you go, oh, danger, hmm, what kind of danger is it? How many options do I have? What should I do? If you start that process, it's slower. The front part of our brain takes 1.3 seconds on average to respond. If you do that in the face of danger, you may not be able to meet danger in a very powerful way. But if in the face of danger, your instincts come to the surface, your emotions come to the surface, and they only take less than a tenth of a second to bring a response in the human body, chances are you'll survive. So under threat, we're designed to become less intelligent and more emotional and reactive. So if you or a client that you have are experiencing stress, the last thing you really need to do is to explain something in a brilliant manner so that they know how to do the job at hand. Their brain, their understanding brain, is literally offline. So under stress, the goal is to decrease the experience of being hijacked and to increase blood flow to the front part of our brain so that we can have more intelligence and more knowledge and more options open to us in the moment. One of the best tools we have is our breath, and we'll go over this in the next few series as well. But if under stress, we breathe slowly and deeply, in through our chest, wide and deep, intentionally and slowly. And we repeat it often in the face of danger, then we can calm down the response to danger. We can decrease the experience of being hijacked and increase the ability to align with our brains in a manner that give us the most options. That's really what we're looking for, is to have the most options available to us in a threatening situation. When we do that, our observer literally sees more options. And that's the goal. So, thanks. This is the first in the series. And my name is Chris Balsley, and if you want to reach me, you can reach me at crispynewfieldnetwork.com. I would love to hear your comments, ideas, or any other thoughts you might have. Thanks. Have a great day, and I'll see you at the next series.